Hello everyone, this is Hoagie 200 Proof, and I'm joined once again by Rocco. Rocco, say hello. Hey, how are you? And we are about to uh, reconvene the the Vienna, Virginia circle um, to discuss a little more Star Wars stuff. And we have, uh, we might sound a bit melancholy, it's because we just watched the Washington Capitals uh, lose 3-2 to two, uh, against the uh, fucking Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, which is something we probably both could have predicted, but uh, it still hurts to watch. Uh, we're also just quickly going to touch on uh, the fact that the Redskins, their pick is in. Uh, we have picked Jonathan Allen, the uh, defensive end from Alabama. And I don't think, uh, as you're saying, Rocco, before we started uh, recording, you, you probably your draft board could just be. Uh, whoever the uh, the top grades are for the f first round, just sort them by. You can probably sort them alphabetically. Just <laughs> mix and match them. They're going to be an NFL for, you know, maybe ten plus years, uh, almost definitely. So, yeah, if I was running a draft board, I would just control S, sort by university, and then I would uh, select <laughs> only Alabama, and then I would sort by weight, and I would select the first player there, regardless of position. <laughs> I, I'm, but I'm really happy we picked him instead of. Uh, uh, whoever the fuck the running back was supposed to be out of, um, was it Nebraska? No, the kid from Florida. Oh, you're talking about the st kid from Stanford? Yeah, Stanford. Like, uh, McCaffrey? Yeah, I mean, I, not to sound racist or anything, but, uh, if you he's a possession running back. We're going to swear. He's a possession. Uh, I don't think this town is ready for a white, white running back. Uh, you know, they're just, I, I, I don't need to get into it, but, you know, they're just, uh, they're they're just. It's just weird to look at, you know. Honestly, but um, I'm really glad we didn't choose a running back just because we don't fucking need that. We actually need some uh, a little speed off the edge. And this guy looks speedy with a 5.0 for a uh, 40 yard dash. Uh, so hopefully he's uh, uh, he's got uh, he's got more quickness than he's got. That's um, no, that's not bad for defensive end, though. I mean, um, didn't the guy who looked like he was wearing like an apron of fat who ran without a shirt like two years ago? I should go find that. Um, <laughs> I can tell you who it was. And no, he didn't run that fast. He ran like a four nine, or he no, ran like he a didn't. four eight. He yes, he did. I swear. He's talking about God. the guy that went to the Bengals. Yeah, who's what's his name? I'm gonna look. I it can't up. remember. He went to Alabama, but I forget his name. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go fat combine forty shirtless. And I get this is Google. At its, there you go, straight up. Andre Smith ran the forty yard dash. Yeah, he didn't run a f under f under five. Okay, hold on. We're gonna see. We're gonna look. Oh, well, what the fuck? Why don't you just Google Andre Smith combine? I will do that next. Okay, calm down, calm down, everybody. We will talk about Star Wars. Yeah, World yeah. yeah you will timestamp this if you don't want to see this. But this is just too good. We gotta uh, combine run. Oh, you know what? We're not going to show the video because I'm sure the NFL. Uh, so far, we're one for two in copyright strikes <laughs> since we started this. Um, so, um, but I got to win this debate right now. This is, we got the internet. Uh, come on. All right, fine. I'm wrong. Five point two eight. Yep. See, there you go. All right. I thought he ran like a like a four nine, and I was like, holy shit, that's faster than I ran <laughs> the forty when I was in high school. Like that's that. He is... ran a five point two eight. Our guy ran what a, fu a, a five five point five flat. Just a five. And flat. Andre Smith is a good nine inches wider, so mm -hmm. that's really like a five point three eight. Well, okay, fine, but uh, that's <laughs> that's fair. He probably. I wonder if they stopped the clock where his gut passed the line. Or, well, it's like uh, when the offensive guard who has, like, T-Rex arms is able to bench press 225, like, 37 times. It's, right. Well, he only has to push it up six inches. Right. All right. Fuck all that. What we wanted to really talk about was um, a bunch of Star Wars stuff, but focusing really on uh, Rogue One. And um, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let uh, Rocco talk a lot in this one. Probably not. Uh, but I let me first start out by I want to replay the the first trailer um, and kind of give my like impression of what I th what I thought when I saw this. Hey, Oki. Yeah. Oki. Yeah. What are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking uh, Jameson uh, Cask Mates. 
It's Jameson that was aged in beer <coughs> barrels. Can like, that makes any fucking difference. That's usually the opposite, but okay, cool. Right. So, all right, right here, it's kind of like, you, you see, ah, oh, okay. The most professional podcast of all time. I can barely hear the uh, dialogue for some reason, but if you're really doing this. I was when I first saw this, and I didn't know anything about the story. Um, I was thinking, actually, this could have been like a really cool, um, like not anti-hero story, but villain story. I thought Jin Urso could possibly be, um, uh, like Dark Side. Like something could happen here, and maybe. She sees like a bad, a bad aspect of the rebellion, or she like sees some sort of like, um, kind of like cowardly aspects of of the rebellion. Uh, it wasn't this. Uh, it wasn't this trailer. So I'm, I'll have to go try to find that one. But it's like one where she's, it's got a shot of her, and she's in the um, like the imperial, uh, you know. Um, the Imperial um, uniform, and it kind of looks like she's, you know, she's like in a covert op, and she's, um, she's an agent for them. This is a much more hopeful trailer, and this is pretty. This one sets it out, like pretty obviously that she's working against the Empire all the way through. Which I, but I thought going into the movie that was even like kind of up in the air for me, and I really kind of wanted to see that that movie I wanted to see like I want to see a kind of weird like good guy story if you're gonna do a gritty Star Wars right if you're gonna do like the real Star Wars then give me of like a villain who I can sympathize with who's actually the protagonist you know what I'm saying Which yeah is, okay so so I thought I'm, maybe I'm, I'm gonna I, cut you off yeah I thought maybe she could be like a double agent like when I first saw when I first saw it so then I saw the movie I kind of had that in the back of my mind and that I think also uh, played into why I had very mixed emotions kind of coming out of the movie. So, all right, go ahead. I agree with you that you wanted an anti-hero here or a uh, wanted, likeable wanted, bad guy, if you will. wanted Christopher Nolan Star Wars, you know? Well, the, the thing is, in my opinion, you get that. Because if you, t if you, if you take off the Shroud of Jyn Erso and you look at the rest of that crew, they have killed... Oh they yeah, have murdered. They have tortured. They have done all the stuff that you see in a rebellion, and you can see it on their faces the whole time. Right. But, I mean, but but it's inferred. Like that's what really bothered me about this movie, is that it's it's uh you all right you get the um you get that first scene with uh what's his face Wh who's the actor um like the the main co star. Um, and he like kills that guy early on, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's like he knows too much, kind of a thing. I that was it. But like you're right, like you can you can totally tell. Uh, that, 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 but that wasn't it. That's that, that's what I think you're wrong. Well, what else? What else do they do? That's like a straight. Okay. Up so let's, killer. let's talk about Bodhi. He gives himself in. He says, "I'm you know I, I want to find Saw Gerrera. I need to find Saw Gerrera to give him these plans." He goes there. Bodhi, he gets Bodhi's the Imperial pilot guy. The right? cargo pilot, right, yeah. Yeah, okay. So he gets Saw, Saw's crew, takes him in, and I want to talk about Saw's crew in a bit here because that annoys me. But he goes in there. He goes into the pit with him, and instead of just listening to him, instead of just taking him, he throws him back there in the back with that octopus-looking thing right. to rip all of his memories out. There is that aspect there. It might not have been in your main characters, but you had a nastiness and an edginess to this movie that I think is about as far as you could get and still stay in the Star Wars realm. The reason is because Star Wars is still, at its core, targeted at not just adults, but kids. So you want this movie to be not something that you'd be like, look, you guys, I'm sorry, I know you're a Star Wars fan. You can't see this. You can see it in a couple years, which is, I think, where we are in this movie. You can't make Saw. Yeah. You can't make Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, no. You can't do that with this. I think this got to that level, and I think it did it well. Like, I know that you are less... You're less... I, I would give this a four and a half, four and a quarter out of five. I think you're closer to a three. Yeah. Maybe There's three. some corniness to this movie, and some of it's coming up in these previews, okay? But the overall story, I was okay with. 
The uh, um, yeah, like I, me too, honestly. But like the story is really simplistic in some ways. It's like her father designs the Death Star. Um, there's an ambitious, you know, <coughs> um, empire, um, you know, uh, guy who's in charge of building the goddamn thing, and and um, and that's that's another thing. Like as as a villain in the movie, uh, I don't even know what the fuck his name is. <laughs> um, um, dude, um, dude in the white suit, like Krennic. Okay, Krennic. I don't, I don't, I didn't get anything from him. Like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna criticize this movie for anything, it's gonna be character development. Uh, and so that's where I think, like, you did you are these characters in like the uh, the novels or the expanded universe or any of that kind of stuff, or were you first introduced mm-hmm. to them in this in this uh, in this movie? To be fair, I haven't. I, I'm not familiar with the entire expanded universe, and I don't remember every single character from my Clone Wars. But I don't think Krennic is. I don't think Jyn Erso is. I know that Saw Gerrera and his crew are. Yeah. Um, I don't. And that's the thing. I don't know shit about him, and that was like frustrating to me too, because uh, from like the total outsider's perspective, you I see him uh, save her, right? Like he's the mm-hmm. one who like looks down the little like. Uh, you know, Saddam Hussein hidey hole, um, bunker thing where she hides from uh Krennic and the you know and then his goons in the first place when they kill the, her her mother and and capture her father, he saves her there and then we just and then we just fucking flip straight forward to, um and she's like a prisoner being transported somewhere and and she's got information we're gonna rescue her right, and then right. when you go back to Sar Saw Gerrera. He is a he is a villain now. Like he's like a he's an he, well he's been wholly, a wholly unlikable guy. Like when we first get you know when we get reintroduced to him, so it's like if you were gonna build if you're gonna if it would have been in my mind it would have been much better served if we had some reason why uh, if we had some scene in there where it would be like why he trusts Jin. Like you're just kind of left to assume. Like you got to show me like why. Um, what he's seen her after so many years. A, how does he know what she looks like, right? B, um, like we don't. I don't know where. I don't know when that relationship, you know, uh, stopped. And then so that like, because he was very paranoid, and they they build all that kind of into him. But they don't. They don't give me a whole lot of reasons why. Like it's just. It seems like a real desperate situation when you see him, and he's really paranoid to the point of becoming like a crazy person, like unstable, and and all the people who are working for him. Are like scared to be around him to the point where that guy, like, yeah, he turns himself in. He's uh, the uh, imperial pilot. What the hell's his name? Bodhi. Uh, he is like he's a victim of of torture for sure. Like he's yeah. He's so try- you just said ten minutes ago that there weren't anti heroes here, and you're no, describing no anti heroes. The main character was it was not an anti hero, and that was like no. that was what's strange to me. That's why. Our, that was like so. I, I've only seen the movie once, and I but I went into it like thinking like, and I tried not to spoil it for myself at all. And that first trailer when, you know, I think like uh, she's talking, and it's like this is a we're the, we're a rebellion, so I rebel, right? Like I thought like that was kind of an interesting thing. I thought maybe she was going to be more like of a Han Solo kind of character, like a little bit selfish and a little bit. Um, uh, like a rogue, like a like a well-hearted rogue, who then instead of like Han Solo, um, kind of comes over to the uh, the benevolent side or like the uh, the selfless side, like matures as a as a character, uh, you know, both in experience but in his own personal like ethic and principle. I thought maybe this could be the other way around. Like this would this would be someone who was uh, like disenfranchised with the rebellion. And the way their rules were, and then gets seduced by like some part of the uh, empire. Like that was totally kind of it was, and that's that's a good teaser trailer where they leave me really imagining all sorts of stuff about what it could be and being interested in it and trying to learn about it. But I was so interested in it, I didn't want to, I didn't want to ruin it for myself, so I didn't look any further into it. So when I sat down, and you're introduced to Jenner, so like they they are treating her with like a lot of caution, like, we can't trust this girl. Like, we don't know who she is. Like, there's a big, trust is a big kind of element in the movie about, um, like, who's who can you trust because there's spies everywhere and things are desperate and they're or they're unknown and, and it's really dangerous right now. So 
uh, and we're doing covert shit, so that's our, that adds its own, you know, trust issues element. But but she was never she didn't have any uh, arc. She didn't really have any dynamic. It was kind of like, even when it came to the suicide mission, she was just like, yeah, okay, like let's go. That's that sounds like something we should do, you know. And it was no, like the arc fuck. wasn't with her. The arc was ended up being with Cassie and Andor, not her. Right, and that was that's where I didn't realize it was going to go that way. And so that was that was a bit hard for me to kind of. I wanted to know more about Jin because I was introduced to her as as her being the the main character, but it kind of felt like she was more like uh, I've heard Red Letter Media guys kind of describe this about um, Mad Max. It's like Mad Max is actually never the main character in any of the Mad Max movies. He's just like the vehicle that plants you in the universe. You know, he's like, and most of the time his stories are like. He's arriving to a totally new situation. He's like, "What the fuck is this?" So, you and and the protagonist know about the same amount of these about the situation as, you know, um, as you're supposed to. And that's as the viewer, you know, without a whole bunch of exposition or backstory or back, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, flashes back to this and that kind of event. That's that's where you come into the movie theater anyway. That's your perspective. So. Um, so that's kind of where I felt like Jin was. We got, we, we saw that she was kind of an orphan and raised by the Saw Gerrera guy. Uh, her father gets kidnapped. Her father builds a Death Star. Her mother gets killed. So obviously she'd probably have some sort of vendetta against the Empire. Um, but it, that whole family life is like introduced. It's a five minute scene and it's over. Saw Gerrera saves her and she just goes with a guy. We don't know any connection about Saw Gerrera to her father. It's none of that's explained. We just move on and then she's an adult. And I don't know any of the fucked up shit that's happened to her. I don't know. I don't know where her head is, even when she's being rescued unexpectedly off of that, like, uh, Empire, you know, prisoner transport. I don't know what she was. I can't even remember at this point what she was accused of that got her, you know, uh, uh, nabbed by the Empire in the first place. So that was my kind of frustration with that is that I think her character is not well developed. And she's kind of like the the thing that then, and she's the driving force of this movie. But you're right; like the people who who do get some developer arc are the surrounding characters, and that's just to me that was like uh, that was hard for me to follow. Like that was hard for me to kind of get emotionally involved in it, even when they made their sacrifice at the end. It was which is the big payoff of the movie. It's like I I was kind of like, well, good, I guess, you know, but. Uh, it but was, they didn't make a sacrifice at the end. <laughs> like that's the thing everyone keeps saying. They didn't know that they were going to blow up the city. No, no, they they didn't. But like they knew the whole speech about them going in there is like, well, we got to do this. It doesn't matter if we're going to take. We're gonna, yes, sure, but it is a sacrifice of a soldier, which is okay. We're going into a battle that we might not walk away from. Right. But a and, true sac, you know, it, they did not know that that they we knew because none of these characters are you know are around anymore. But they did not know that the Death Star's last final move was going to be to blow up the base. Right. Well, I, I mean, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Cassian and all these guys died there. Like, I had no idea that that was going to happen. I got the sense of it when we got, like, kind of down to it. And people started kind of dying one by one. And the only people who were left were, um, you know, Cassian and Jin. But, I mean, they could have had uh, a bigger role... You know that we didn't see in the uh, in the original trilogy going forward, and they just kind of were were background characters because there's there's hundreds upon thousands of those people like in these films. If you're if you're thinking about it that way, like there's a ton of uh, fighter pilots who don't get introduced to. There's a ton of maybe you know covert ops spy people were not introduced to. As there's the, the guy in this that looked like uh, what's his name with a mustache. There's um, yeah the dude who looks kind of like Super Mario. <laughs> um, no, but he looks like Daniel Craig with a mustache, kind of. Who's wait? Who's that? The it, Green Leader or whatever, like the pilot you learned to. Read. Oh yeah, well there's Wedge, you know for sure. But like, well Wedge is only mentioned. He's not actually in the movie. Like he's they mentioned his name once. No Wedge is in the Wedge is in the movie. He's he uh, Luke. Oh, I mean, not, not, are you talking about Rogue One or are you talking about um, the original trilogy? Rogue One. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Right, right, right. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so, and I'm going to let you fill me in on this kind of stuff, but that was, that was my main, um, uh, main issue with the movie. It was just kind of like, I didn't uh, <laughs> get, I didn't get very emotionally involved with, uh, 
like Jin's kind of motivations, I, they weren't kind of clear to me because I had so many more questions about her upbringing after, you know, Saw Gerrera, uh took uh, charge of her when she was, what, like five or six? I mean, like really, really young. Like, uh, I'm looking at my own son and wondering how much of the day-to-day he's remembering. You know, like if I died tomorrow, would he have a solid memory of me? Like, hopefully by five... Uh, yeah, he would, but like as time would wear on, there wouldn't be the same kind of emotional connection uh, that I have with my father. I've lived a li- you know, my whole life with, and and he's still alive today. Like with Jin, it's like if you don't, if this person leaves you uh, at the age of five or six, like which is a very impressionable age, I get that. But you're also still young enough and not mature enough to really understand what's going on. And would you then feel, you know, compelled to? Uh, like overwhelming compulsion to to help this person or find this person well, when you're this older. This person didn't leave you. This person was taken. Was you. taken. It's yeah, right. It's right. different than if you died or you left on your own. I mean, this person was taken away from you in your face by people that you know that you have been preparing. Even as a kid, you know on the primal level you have been preparing to run away from. Right. So, yeah, I think that that's there. I don't think any of us can really understand that feeling. But to get to your point about all right, so I want to give my take on Rogue One in a second here, but yep. first I want to just kind of counterpoint some of the stuff you said. I agree that Jyn Erso's character is kind of shallow in, in the movie. Absolutely. On the other hand, Cassian's is very well developed. Um, I kind of hate Krennic, but his character is developed. You get the introduction to Tarkin, which is important. You begin to see Vader, which is important. And so you had an, you had at most, so the movie's runtime was an hour, or two hours and 13 minutes. The very most you could have held people in that theater for two and a half hours, so 150 minutes. You can't develop everybody. You just can't. Right. You're going to have to pick a character or two to develop. And you're also going to have to fit it into the series. So you have to make those connections, which means you have to have Vader. You have to have Leia. You have to have some of this stuff there. You also need to figure out which character you want to develop and make the tough one to follow. Now, you have Jin, who's the obvious one, because she's the main protagonist. But in Cassian, you have somebody who comes out as, look, I'm a warrior. I've been doing this for forever. You're new to this. You know, that scene that when he says to her, he goes, some of us haven't had the, you know, you choose to fight. I'm messing up the words. Like, you choose to fight when you're upset. Some of us don't have that choice. Right. So you know in his past he's lost people, right? And yet he's able to say, you know, I can't kill him, even though I feel like I should. I can trust her with the blaster. I can do these things. So his arc was, in my opinion, incredibly good. And you couldn't have developed both. The same way in in The Force Awakens, you learn a little bit about um, about, uh, Finn. And you learn a little bit about, uh, what's her name? But you don't learn everything about either. Right, right. Right, because you've got... Well, we're also. But you know, you have two more movies to learn about that. Right, right, but, exactly. So, so what? My biggest criticisms for you no, know, you want my take on my criticisms. I want to say the good things too, but we can do the criticisms first. Um, you want that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, I get why they wanted this to be a standalone, and I get that the tone is different. This is more of like a Saving Private Ryan movie than it is a Star Wars movie. This, or what I should say is, this is more of like a military movie than an opera, which is what all the Star Wars movies have been, right? So this is more of a Saving Private Ryan, you know, uh, Hamburger Hill. It's a war movie, really, yep, yep. than the other. So I get it's got a different tone. It's got, I like the fact that they use a different song because it's not part of the series. But it is. It literally ends at the beginning of the next fucking movie. So to say it's a standalone is kind of BS. Like, I get that it doesn't have the Luke... Leia, Anakin, a Palpatine, Vader story to it, but it's it's hard to call it a standalone when it literally feeds into the beginning of the next movie. Now, where do you fit it in? You've got one, two, three, which I pretend don't exist, four, five, six, seven, and you're going to have eight, nine. So really, this is like that three and a half, but it's not a standalone. It literally is part of the story. So I don't like the fact that it was sold as one. I get why it was, but it's really not. Right. So that's my one criticism. My second criticism, and my, the rest of them I have are pretty much minor. Um, but I if think, you go, yeah, I think um, I think what if I was going to cut one character, it probably would have been Dan, or maybe two, I guess, is Danny, Danny Yen, or Donnie Yen, and um, 
and his protector guy because like I remember I remember reading an article one of the things I did like some piece of clickbait got me was Donnie Yen originally didn't want to do Rogue One right mm -hmm. uh, it was like and this is a weird thing that's kind of happening with movies I, I see more like the red letter media guys I, don't, I never noticed it until the like I started watching the red letter media review stuff and they started mentioning it. they mentioned it with the with like I guess it was like Transformers 4 where they're it was like they're ripping on it and then all of a sudden half the movie just shifts over to China and that's because China's become such a box office uh factor that almost every American production needs to have like the China factor in it now it's like how do we get China interested in this movie it's like well we get like one of the one of the most, um, you know, well-known Hong Kong action stars to be in Star Wars. Like, that is a dream come true. And, like, I re read this article, and Donnie Yen is talking, like, well, I didn't want to do it originally, but then I read the script. and Because I didn't want to do... He, he actually was saying something like, I didn't want to do some sort of kind of stereotypical martial artsy, you know, wise man role. I, I want to find the article. Because I read that before the movie... And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, so he's not going to be some, like, warrior monk uh, guy. And, he, and then he's, like, he's blind. And uh, I knew he was, like, I knew there was some, you know, something going on with the Force. He, uh, you didn't see him use a lightsaber in any of the, uh, in the uh, previews. But I read that article, and then I, all throughout the movie I'm watching it, and I'm like, this is how the – what fucking script did they give you? Because this is exactly – like, this is exactly the stereotypical role I would have thought they would have – they would have just jammed a martial arts uh, action star player in, like some sort of oddly mystical uh, kind of, um, you know, martial arts master guy who's also a Jedi who's spiritual and oddly spiritual. So – I was I just was really kind of let down watching that because I just felt like his whole role was was kind of crowbarred in there like it was uh he was an interesting character and so was his you know kind of sworn protector but he's also doing a whole lot of stuff that I'm like eh like you know even when you when you get me going eh like you're stretching the the rules of reality for me in in Star Wars when I'm giving you a whole lot of suspension of disbelief like yeah. that's you know yeah. that's that's tough. Like when I I mean was he he wasn't sniping guys blind was he, like using the he force, was, was he? <laughs> like I I mean, he was he I, swiped some some ships over here. Yeah, I kind of remember that. I'm like from from like sound like at night. Are you are you kidding me? Like come on now. But um, you probably should have like rewatched the movie. <laughs> yeah, I probably <laughs> before we did this episode. Yeah, I, I know, I know. But but we want to well, we want to talk about I think as a general idea for this theme, and I think you and I would you would agree with this, like from what we kind of talked about before is that this, this whole setup would have been like really cool as a, as a mini series leading. Yeah. Up well, to, I, I want to talk about that. On leading up to, yes, there was too much here to do in one up in, right, one, in right. two and a half hours, if you're, but yeah. All right. So, so let me, let me finish what I was going at before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's standalone. It's basically a part of the series because without this happening, you don't have the plans for the Death Star, which lead to the original effing movie. So it's like, that's kind of a major point here. Mm -hmm. Two, all right, let me also preface this by saying this. I get this debate, I'm, I'm going to go off on a very small tangent for a second here. I debate people all the time about the Christopher Nolan Batman series. Yeah. But I consider Bane a better bad guy than Joker or Tom Hardy's Bane versus Joker. And people say, how can you say that? Heath Ledger's Joker was amazing. Well, first of all, Two things. One, part of that, I think, is because Heath Ledger, the martyr syndrome aspect of that. Second of all, I'm basically saying a diamond is nicer than a ruby. They are both amazing fucking movies. Amazing. So when I criticize this movie, I'm criticizing a movie that I also is one of like three DVDs I've actually gone out and bought in like the last five years because I love the movie. OK, let me start by saying that I will watch it 50 times, I'm sure. But since it is Star Wars, I expect a lot out of it. Um, so therefore, I will criticize it because this is like, I, I expect a ton, but I still don't get me wrong. I love this movie and I enjoyed it. 
and I still enjoy it. And watching it the second time, I was at the edge of my seat. I enjoy it. Um, but there are just little things that bug me. And, one, and a lot of them come down to what you said, which is if this was a miniseries, if this was a 12 hour, 12 part, two season HBO special, it'd be amazing, but it's not. So here we are. All right. So if you can bring up that link I sent you before, this is a small little attention to detail thing. Yep. When Bodhi rolls down to Jetta to try to find Saw Gerrera, he bumps into these guys. One of these guys is a also clearly a former Imperial person. You bring that picture up? Yeah, I was trying to find the... Because I think they actually got the screen cap from the movie. Well, he's not in that scene, though. He, oh. Well, he is, but you can't see him in that picture. Okay. If you're going to try to not be caught as an obvious turncoat from the Empire in a city that's swarming with people that are stormtroopers and stuff from the Empire, maybe don't just take your scout trooper helmet and outfit and paint it black with, like, a Sharpie. <laughs> this is what this guy did to try to, like, whoa, the world <laughs> recognize me now. I mean, so, and this this goes into a larger arc, and I, I want to get into this, maybe not this episode, but at some point we talk about the politics of Star Wars because I think it's interesting. So, you have a major scene here, and I don't know if you can find a picture of this, but so you've got Jada, the city, or the major city on Jada, which is basically set up to be this kind of lawless place, kind of like Mos Eisley. It's a place where, you know, all the bandits and the mercenaries from around the universe come together. And then you have that image where you have the Imperial Star Destroyer docked, and you have stormtroopers walking through. Yep. And if you don't see that scene in the battle scene and think about, say, Black Hawk Down, um, or many other places where you have a lawless city and you have uh, like a U.S. destroyer or aircraft carrier docked there, and you have presence there, or it doesn't have to be U.S. or a Russian or a British, you can see that, and everyone knows that, that Star Wars is very much political, right? So there's a lot of political aspects to it. And, and um, Spielberg and Lucas both admit this, right? So we knew this was part of it, but that just kind of that scene. And that leads to this where you've got like, you've got everything there. You've basically got Mogadishu. You've got troops or peacekeepers, as they would probably call themselves if you're a fan of the Empire at the time. You've got mercenaries. You've got illegal things being moved around. You've got them stripping a mineral out of the city. I mean, there is so much there that to me, it's hard to step away from that and be like, oh, okay, there's a message being sent here. But anyway, that's a different tangent I don't want to go off on. So there's another one of my criticisms. It's just a minor one, like attention to detail. Like he wouldn't dress like that. I know why they did it. They wanted to be recognizable. They wanted to like, oh yeah, he's a scout trooper. Yeah, I get that. But it just doesn't make sense to me. Another thing, when Bodhi goes Saw Guerrero immediately is like, I don't believe this guy. I don't trust that guy. So let me throw him in the back with Cthulhu, or the fuck that thing's name was. Correct. And it'll suck out all of his memories, but they'll at least get the information they need. And then they throw him into a cell. Fast forward about a half hour. Um, Jin, Cassie, and they're all there because they're rescued by the crew and they're, they're brought back to this place. That spot there where they're all hanging out yep. is one of the coolest places in the entire universe. Like, I want to watch them interact, talk, all those groups, all those different aliens, those different bandits. However, they, they bump into the pilot, um, what's his name, Bodhi, and he's just like a shell of himself because he's obviously had everything ripped out of his skull. And then the attack happens, they get to escape, and then boom, he's just back to normal. Well, why did you even have that happen if you're just going to have him, you know, your concern with development of the character of Jin, my concern is with the development of the character of Bodhi, you shred this guy and make him a shell of himself and then... It's back to normal. Right. I, I, no, I was, that was jarring too. I'm like, this, what, why the fuck would this guy do anything for the rebellion right now? Like, they have treated him like total dog shit. And that's, but that led me to be like, well, what the fuck is Saw Guerrero's problem that he is so fucking, what happened to him that we didn't hear about? Like, I know they're trying to get that out in this scene. Like, that look how look how tough survival has been for this character, you know this part of the rebellion. But he's also <laughs> introduced as being not really a friend to the, to the rebellion at that point. Well, so, he's basically like the extremist from the rebellion that they're like, we can't afford to support this guy anymore. <laughs> he makes us look bad. Like, how is he an extremist though? Like, what's what's his what? Why? Well, you learn some of that in Clone Wars. Okay. Like he goes out, he goes rogue and stuff like that, and. 
There's another character like him. He's extremist um, anti empire, right? Yes. Okay. But he goes to extremes that are beyond what other people would be comfortable doing. So he's, I mean, he's a terrorist, basically, right? He's like a. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, okay. Which is like, you know, a lot of people, I guess, forget this or. Um, me being a hundred percent Irish, which is rare for, you know, anyone in America to be a hundred percent anything, you know, all you mudbloods out there with your, with your multiple, uh, <laughs> um, you know, backstories from either Europe or wherever else, you know, you're coming from, at least you, most Americans have a nice, a nice mix of, uh, some other, you know, nationality. But for us, it's a hundred percent Irish and it's like Irish history uh, especially modern history, breaking away from from Britain. A lot of people, like I guess, probably don't realize if they don't look into it. It's a very recent history. It's uh, you know 1941, I believe, is when the Irish uh, uh, Irish independence was actually uh, moved from being a free state to a, a sovereign uh, nation. And it's like I'm probably embarrassing myself if I'm getting that wrong. But um, Michael Collins and Eamon de Valera organized and kind of invented uh, modern terrorism. Like, that's an, that's kind of an Irish invention. The car bomb, uh, they, they looked at the situation. They realized that the British Empire was, was unbeatable in a um, direct war. Like, they couldn't, they would never survive a direct war rebellion with uh, the British Empire. So what did they do? They decided to try to make holding on to Ireland... So, um, so, um, costly and so involved that, uh, their overreaction to their, you know, uh, murdering a few officials or some secret police or blowing up a police station here and there, uh, that the British Empire's overreaction would either sway, um, uh, the, the international community against them. Or it would make them make Ireland just not worth holding on to anymore, because they were struggling in all sorts of places at that time in history. You know, all over the the realm, it was all over the British Empire. Was basically, you know, uh, the sun was setting on the uh, on their you know colonial era, and and this was after uh, World War One, and they were you know they really were reeling from all that kind of stuff. But that's that was an effective way. To fight a war like that was a really effective way to fight a war you can't raise a standing army you don't have the resources you don't have the weapons you're an occupied nation so what do you do you go after the people now this is what I think this is uh this is this is probably a dangerous discussion topic but this is what I think uh, al-qaeda and some other idiots do not understand in the modern era you don't go blow up mosques if you really want to get you know things done you try to go find the people who are trying to kill you, and you kill them. And that's not the average U.S. citizen. You know, that's the someone in the CIA or someone who's in, you know, counterintelligence. You would go find whoever that person is. You would go find somebody who's corruptible in that system, find out information about that person, and then try to blow up their car or uh, just murder them in the street. And if they work in D.C., that wouldn't even be like a out of play story. That's how you would try to fight that war. You try to cut the head off of the snake and not try to, you know, um, uh, not try to blow up like a supermarket or make everyone's life life, you know, filled with terror. It's like you're trying to kill the people who are coming after you, so that they realize like, or they just finally say, this isn't worth it, or we're scared for our lives. We don't want to do this anymore. And the public doesn't care because they're not the ones being killed. It's the the police who are being killed. That's that's basically how Ireland kind of won its independence from from Britain. It became any victory that Britain had. It was a pyrrhic victory. It wasn't worth uh, the cost. So they just they let Ireland go. They're like, fuck you guys. You're not. You have no resources. You you really aren't even providing us people for our army anymore. You're more trouble than you're worth. All right, you can go. And that's that's kind of how it went. And it went through stages. It went first for, into a free state, and then you know Northern Ireland never was 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 give, oh, was uh, given over to uh, the new Irish Republic. So that's still part of the the uh, British Empire, but it worked. So like I could see how a Saw Gerrera character that would be like really really interesting to develop more in this kind of a universe where 
um, you don't attack the Empire directly. You could never, ever match their, um, you know, their strength or their fortitude. So what do you do? You try to find um, weaknesses in their overall power structure, and you destroy those. I mean, you could even, you know, I'm playing through uh, TIE Fighter, and you're basically like a, you know, an average uh, Navy pilot, you know, in the, uh, in the uh, Imperial Navy, and the the rebels are always kind of talked about kind of as terrorists. And that's kind of how, um, even as it, when I first played that game and when it came out like 1994, that was my mindset thereafter. It's like, yeah, they're they're the underdog. You know, they're not supposed to be able to beat the big, bad military power. They have no chance of doing that. So they have to do these kind of like hit and, hit and grab, um, you know, um, hit and run kind of missions and then try to just outlast them or... Uh, spread them so thin and and confuse them so much that you can then sway the uh, the uh, the battle you know into your uh, advantage. So that would have been a really cool thing to develop. And so that was really frustrating to me that like all of that just felt so hurried. You know, like when the Saw Gerrera kind of introduction and the Bodhi torture and like <laughs> then after that, like why is he friends with these people? Like I would be. You know, I would be able, immediately feel so traumatized or disenfranchised with these people who I came to with valuable information, and I was conflicted about it, and I betrayed who I was working for, who what you know the organization organization I was a part of. I took a huge risk in coming to you people, and what do you do? You hook me up to a like a brain melting device. Like that is fucking crazy. Yeah, but remember, he didn't end up with that crew. He no, ended he, up with the other crew that was in prison with him. Right. Right. So that's part of that. But he had now, to quickly get his shit together to get them all off the uh, the planet before the Empire blew it well, up. Well, he didn't so. do that. That was the uh, droid got them off. Oh, okay. There he is. Okay, okay, all right, so okay. before we go any further, I'd first like to thank, I'd like to welcome our new listeners from the NSA. <laughs> and uh, I probably, probably Baghdadi. He's probably oh, listening right now. If right. so, you're a douche, and I hope a tomahawk finds you in the face. Um, <laughs> that's for Baghdadi. i Love the NSA and I love my country. Go America. Um, hi guys. Me too. So, Me too. I'm just like pissed off that uh, terrorists are just stupid and uh, you know, like fight fight the soldiers in the battle and in. in well, the... I have a book for you, by yeah. the way. Before like a little tangent here, I have a book called uh, I think it's called Small Wars by Max Boot. He talks about um that type of stuff, like. It, you know, it happened in Ireland, but even before Ireland and places like India and Algeria, you see these type of battles. But I will give it to you someday and you should read it. It's very, very good. Or I forget the name of it. Um, I know you're not a big reader, but you would really, really yeah, like this. It's I'm, broken I'm, up I, into bits. When I can find the time, I, I, I love to read. But... Read it to your kids. They're not going to know the difference. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. All right. Um, okay, but, so let's back get to in, Star Wars. Yeah, get into all the stuff that you like about this and I and, and I I liked a lot of stuff from this movie. I mean, the, right. overall, me, it's, me, I'm favorable with this movie. It's just that there are some things about it that it was like they kept it from being a, a fantastic movie or a great movie. I I grade Star Wars movies the same way I would grade like PhD students. I grade them harder. Right. I expect more out of them. Yeah, me too. So, all right. Now let's now since you got to tell your negative sides first, and I, I kind of responded. Let me tell you my my positive sides, then I'll turn it over to you to to respond. First of all. The battle scene at the end, that 27 minute battle scene that takes place both in space, on the land, and the individual fight scenes that are going on inside of the base is quite possibly the best layered battle I have seen in a long time. Like it was, it was 27 minutes and it felt like it was six. Like it was quick, it was, there was no wasted time. There was no wasted fighting. It had me on the edge of my seat. It was mind blowing. I enjoyed every bit of it. I enjoyed the interplay between them. Um, the the jump to oh we need to get oh okay now the fight now the tie fighters are here to help us like right at the right time the first time they see the walker that's like those scenes to me even though even the parts that were kind of corny and the little one liners that were in there that in and of itself was like well worth whatever price of admission I paid to get in there like that twenty seven minutes of battle was amazing in my opinion. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I've got in the background. So in the background of um, what I'm watching right now is some minor league NASCAR race. And there's a car driving around that says Coney 2012 on it. 
and I have no idea why. <laughs> what? <laughs> What the fuck? It's like the Bush series at Bristol, and it's just this Coney 2012 on the are side you, of a car. Are you watching, like, not no, even... No, it's whatever was on after the Caps game. It's just the TV is still on. Not even ESPN Classic? Like, you're watching, no, no, like... No, this is this is the... It's NBC Sports This is Channel? the K&N Pro East Series. Why would... But why? I-K-N-P-S East Bristol. It's not live, right? It's not... No, it's... but it's from this year. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> it just said... I was like, does that say Coney? Does that say 2012? That says Coney 2012 on the side of the car. So anyway, I don't know. I'm sorry for those of you guys listening at home, but I can't let that slide. Yeah, that is fucking weird. So after this, I'd like for us to look up Coney 2012 NASCAR connection. Mm, yeah, and it's like, yeah. a, it's like the ECHL of NASCAR too. Okay, so anyway. All right. So that scene was amazing. Um, I thought that the... Okay, um... I lost my train of thought. You go, you go ahead, and I will. I'll come back to it. Well, I I thought that was great. Uh, obviously, I mean, I thought that was uh, what was what really was actually. You know, looking back on the um, the prequels that are hard to discuss, the thing that really, really, really was missing, I think, was or a huge letdown when I watched uh, the first uh, episode one was the space battles in that movie are fucking shit. Like, they, it is, you know, and I can't believe I've uh, I've, I've played an almost, like, complete Let's Play of uh, TIE Fighter, and I haven't been, and this is pod racing. Like, I haven't said that once yet. I'm actually kind of proud of myself, because that... I don't know what movie you're talking about. I've never seen All right, movie. but, I mean, like, the, the, the ships in that movie like why like why did they look like that they were just fucking stupid designs you know it's like we're supposed to we're just supposed to just uh um assume that like everyone had different looking uh starships also like half of the the starship starfighters in in the uh, prequels probably more than half are all fucking droids like that kind of just has no weight to it like when you know, when it's a TIE fighter and there's a pilot there, like cloned or otherwise, you know, it's like it's a it's it's an adversary. When it's when you're shooting a, like droids, you know, maybe not in this universe because droids actually kind of have some sort of a weird sentient and you know sentience and and uh, persona. But when you just shoot a droid, it's kind of like you're just shooting you know like a piece of uh, a building or like a machine. It's just a it's just a collection of uh, material. It's not really you know, um, winning the war. It's just like, it's like re it's just destroying some shit that they owned. You know, basically it's not like, it's not, it's not a, it's not a victory over another pilot. It's not a winning, it's not a one mm. dog fight. And that's all that you got in those first uh, three movies. And that was so frustrating and that just sucked. And so uh, this was, this was a return to, I think what was, I guess somehow forgotten when they went to the prequels, like the space battles, well, are, because that are, was a there were droids then. that was different, right? That right, was but like the clones and all that other stuff. So. Okay, but like the space battles were were the were the thing that drew me in as a kid. Like mm -hmm. the, the lightsaber shit, and like the talking and the the story. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like what drew me in as a kid was those space battles, like those those starfighter one on one space battles and everything and the capital ships and flying in and out all that stuff that was amazing to me and that was like you know that was like the top gun kind of of uh like moment where I was like oh my god I want to be a I want to be an X-wing pilot like I thought the X-wing was like the coolest thing I'd ever seen I think you know I didn't really know about all the ships back then but I thought the tie fighter looked awesome and like the noise it made you know with its engines all that was so cool and so to see a lot more of that happened in this movie was was just awesome and amazing. And I was like, okay, because it's and it wasn't like over the top. It wasn't crazy. It was actually you know it was purpose driven. But I thought this space battle and all those set pieces were way better than anything that uh, Star Wars Seven had in it. So that's great. But it the action wasn't. Uh, I'll say this. This is where I I when I left the theater I was like. I was kind of, huh, like, what, you know, I was trying to sort out my feelings about it and why did I feel the way it was. I, the, the death scene that I felt the worst about that hit me the most was K2SO. Like, I actually was most affected by 
him. Wait, wait, wait! You five minutes ago you said that you didn't give a shit about droids getting shot in space. No, no, because we're not introduced to any of those droids, right? Like they're also mm -hmm. like it's not even like a droid inside of a ship. It was like the ship itself is a fucking droid, right? right? It's like I, I can't, you can't. That's not you know the little stupid hapless like minions before they were minions on the on the planet of Naboo. Those you know those were you know those were just. Um, cannon fodder like they're just kind of uh they're not there's no personality there there's no nothing whereas roger Kate, roger 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 yeah yeah right right and then you know c3po having his head you know welded onto one of them and like that whole stupid thing like all that was just ugh, like it doesn't it just has no weight to it whatsoever no emotional weight and i'm not saying like show me people i want people to die all the time but like i got it there's two sides to a war it's never that simple and so you know, there's 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 weight to it when somebody dies on a battlefield, not not so when it's just a droid army versus you know uh, people. Like it just kind of seems like the people are just going around a radio shack and smashing everything up. It's not. It's just no no emotional connection. So K two S O, however, is is he's really like uh, Alan uh, Tudyk, I think, or I forget. Mm -hmm. his, I'm butchering his it's last Alan name. Tudyk, yep. But he's he's awesome, like as the voice, like he's he's quippy and he's the kind of comic relief. But he's the comic relief in the same way. And you've never played this, but I think a lot of people listening would would understand this. Um, he is like a throwback to one of the best characters um, in uh, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. God, I can't fucking remember his name, but uh, it's a droid who basically calls like humans meat bags, like. You know he's he's really he's logic, and and uh, he's kind of weirdly the um, autistic, like honest and insulting like uh, character who calls shit out all the time. But mm -hmm. he can he you can kind of like change his program in one point to either be more benign, not he's not necessarily good, or you can change him to be like a fucked up you know evil droid. And who is almost like, you know, machines are, are superior and all this kind of stuff. Like K2SO has got personality behind him and he's funny and he's he's interesting. And so when he is holding down the fort and like kind of kicking ass and, uh, you know, being the guy who has to close the, the airlock, he's got to sacrifice himself so the others can mm -hmm. complete the mission. That actually was like, oh, fuck, that that affected me. But like when... Um, uh, Donnie Yen and his protector are just kind of like out there on the beach and, you know, they're getting <clears throat> lit up. I was just kind of like, okay, I saw that one coming, you know, and, and that one didn't <coughs> re really affect me as much. And that was also before I thought like, you know, everybody, this is all of a sudden going to turn into a Quentin Tarantino film and everyone, everyone I was introduced to is dead. Um, so it was, and then uh, that was also kind of a thing where I was, I was a little bit let down by the fact that like everybody died. Um, because it just kind of felt, felt like, uh, um, that was it. Like we just, it was like a blink of the eye. We met these people and then they're all dead, you know, it's, and it's not like a Quentin Tarantino film where, um, it exists all on its own and you were kind of, and the whole movie was about character development In this one. It's like, I was, I wanted to know a lot more about these characters I didn't get it, and I know I'm not going to get it because they're all dead at the end. Well, but maybe you will, and here's why. So some movies set themselves up for sequels. These ones kind of set themselves up for further standalones that could go before, and that's kind of what Star Wars does. So we might have a movie 10 years from now that talks about Cassie. Yeah, I I would, maybe. and I would watch, yeah, that would be great, and that would be great, like as kind of like a mini series or something like that, and or like, you know, like you say, like kind of the true detective um, yeah. format, which I think is a, a very interesting point about like the future of of entertainment movies. Like people would much rather watch; they'd rather sit down and binge. Uh, which it's funny. It's like you if a movie gets to anywhere near the three hour mark, you got people complaining. You got people kind of like needing to go out and go to the bathroom because they drank a you know, a uh, hundred and sixty four ounce uh, uh Mountain Dew, right? They they probably also need to uh get insulin um shot uh while they also take a piss. But like they'll complain about three hours in the movie theater and then they'll go home and they'll watch some series start to finish in like one Saturday. 
So um, it's like the, and that's kind of how people, but I think what they're frustrated about is, you know, a movie, you're expected to do all this shit in two hours, like you say. Like, you can't possibly fit all that you want to say in this limited window. So something is either going to get left out or it's all going to be rushed and it's going to be unsatisfying or you're going to piss off your audience if you keep them there for like, you know, out of their homes uh, for more than, um, you know, for more than two hours. So, um, so I think, I think it would be really cool to see like a mini series where um, the backstory uh, of some of these guys is, is, is more fleshed out, but uh, I don't know if we'll ever get that. That's, that's kind of, you know, the frustrating thing, but also in this expanded arc, I still want to see my, sympathetic empire you know character like the empire is is introduced as like you know back in the original series uh original trilogy the empire is, is literally nazis in space right and the re- uh, yeah Definitely. and and the reboot is is definitely uh nazis in space right but there's mm-hmm. that whole kind of transition that you know a lot more about cuz you've seen the um the miniseries with uh, Clone Wars, right? Where there's yeah. there's a ton of stories in there, I think, of like people who the Empire either um, needed to uh, capture or assimilate as part of their kind of war engine as it as it shifted from being the Republic into the Empire, um, who were probably conflicted about the choices they had to make, or um, maybe even felt like, you know. Um, the empire that resulted was was not a bad thing. Like you know, bureaucracy is is uh, can can be a very damaging, very costly thing. Not I mean, not only just in in time and money and resources, but like sometimes uh, like real human costs. Like you know, if you can't get things done fast enough, um, you, people will suffer. And so I think there could be like room for a, a sympathetic. Um, um, empire story where someone either gets like recruited to the dark side and there's, and there's reason for it, you know, like, you know, the Anakin story is, would be the perfect one. Unfortunately, that's fucked beyond all repair at this point, I think. But, um, unless it gets totally redone, like that would be great. Like we're soft rebooting every goddamn franchise on earth. Like why, why not go back and do this one at some point? Um, you know, hopefully they will, but, um, somewhere else, like somewhere like a lesser character who's maybe force sensitive, who gets just brought into that dark side kind of thing. Like, like the, uh, it'd basically be the empire's version of Saw, Saw Guerrero, right? Someone who's, who feels like they need to take extreme measures in order to accomplish a task, like for the greater good, you know, the utilitarian, uh, choice. Like I'm going to, I am going to torture these people. I am going to capture these people. I'm going to kill this this small group of people to save the, you know, the the thousands of people that these people had uh risked the lives of. What? His name is Anakin. Right, I know. It's like but there's probably somewhere else someone else in there and like I was hope, okay. I was hopeful for that when I first saw the, you know, the teaser trailer for this. And so I'm I'm still looking for that. Like I think that well, would, and that might be the next the next not the next standalone, but the third one because we don't see you know, you can't develop that story at the same time you're developing how they got the Death Star plans. Like, there's limits, like we said. Right, right, right. right. Now, we're coming up on an hour and a half. Um, I think that this is a perfect time for us to transition over into where we're going to go from here on this. Okay. And if you can bring up the, if you can Google correct order for Clone Wars. All right. Um, but I think we'll be fun about this. And I think what, 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 what Hokie and I are going to do is we're going to do some episodes. And so Hokie has not seen... Clone Wars yet, the, the animated series. I have seen it. I've seen a couple of them. I've seen a majority of it twice, but it's been a while. Um, so we're going to go back through them and watch them and discuss them as we go. And I, since I've seen them before, can kind of break up, you know, where we want to, um, you know, where's a good stopping point, for example. So, for example, when you go back to that list you just had up a second, yep. a second ago. I think for the first episode that we do, so maybe you know next week or the week after, if we can watch the first two episodes in the film, that's a good stopping point. So we go for those three, and then we'll start going through by piece by piece, and we'll uh, start working our way through Clone Wars. And it'll be interesting because you'll have 
uh, a Hokie seeing it for the first time, which is always fun. And hopefully by seeing it another time, I'll be able to maybe pick up on some things that I had initially and talk a little bit more from the broad level of where it might fit into the overall series. Now, let me warn both you and our listeners. Some of these episodes are just filler. Not a lot of them, but some of them are. And they're fine. And, you know, you said they're 21 minutes, so it's not, whatever. You know, it's not like you're losing a lot of time in it. But some of them don't really they, – they, they don't really – forward the story very much but you may as well watch them it gets you through it but um overall it's a great series uh and then after we do this if we, if we get to the end of this um we may want to do something similar with rebels i've only seen bits and pieces of rebels i see it on airplanes here and there i've never watched it all the way through what i've seen of it has been fantastic and i know that we learn a lot more about some of these characters <laughs> like saw Gerrera and the origination of darth vader um from that so, and I think you might see some of those characters you're talking about that have that sort of soft spot for, um, for, um, uh, for the, for, for, for being good, but also being a bit of a Sith. Right. Like being evil in, in the service of good. Or becoming evil by starting out doing it in the service of good. Right. The right. Bills selected Tredavious White, cornerback out of LSU. I know nothing about him. Um, anyway. Okay. So, and then the one other thing I wanted to mention, though, before we finish rap for tonight and, and rap on Rogue One, is I remembered the other thing that I really, both I loved and hated in this film. Yeah. What I loved was I thought that they did a good job of having little Easter eggs here and there to the other movies, but in a way that I thought was subtle enough and not in your face enough that it was good. For example, obviously the two guys that are on Jetta that you see later on at most Eisley, like talk about having a bad day, right? These guys were there and then they go, you know, they got off just in time. But then like three days later, dude gets his arm cut off by Ben Kenobi and most Eisley continues. So that was kind of cool. Um, if you notice when they're getting ready to run back to their ships to engage in the battle that the, um, that, that the Rogue One folks have already kind of initiated, when, um, when Bail Organa leaves, you know, he says, he's like, I would trust her with my life He's speaking of Leia, obviously, but also as he's walking out the door, there's an overhead sound that says like Captain Antilles to your ship. So it's just that little hint. Now you never see Wedge in the movie, but you hear that, you know? And right. so, and then um, that brings us to the final scene, which is Vader absolutely obliterating rebel fighters in a way that makes him the Darth Vader badass that we've come to love. Right. Did that you? we wish... That, yeah. that, that scares us in the first movie, scares us in the second movie, and even scares us through the third movie. And I thought that was really cool. I, at the same time, I couldn't stand... Well, I didn't mind his scene with, um, with Krennic, but I hope that I fast forward every single time when he turns around and says, like, don't choke your chance away. I don't like Darth Vader with puns. We, we don't need that. <laughs> that is completely unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a bit close. I don't know why he decided to go back to Mustafar to have his like <laughs> base where he like lost all his limbs. But whatever, he likes volcanoes. Okay. Um but well, <laughs> so I liked the the throwback to the other movies and stuff and I thought they did it at the right balance. But the scene at the end where he just unleashes is just and I know that's not a unique thought. Everybody says that. Like that it was just really cool to me well, how it What's funny is like I don't know like uh I I'm been mentioning them a lot and you probably haven't seen any of their shit like if you watch any of the red letter media um reviews like they their their most famous work i think or what made them kind of a name on youtube is um is is mr plinkett's reviews he basically tears apart the prequels and i you definitely should watch those it's like it's it's like three hours worth of shitting all over the prequels so um you know dedicate some time to it or or take it in chunks because I think it is broken up into like uh, ten minute chunks. But um, uh, they like uh, Mike, who is the kind of like the the big the the big uh, brains on the operation on Red Letter Media. He was like he was kind of off put by that. Like he was like, oh yeah, what I want to see more of is is Darth Vader murdering people. I'm like, yeah, I do. Like I yeah. I want I want to see what made him. This like you know, other than the uh, the overall um, uh, kind of uh, 
uh, evil that he was responsible for in pushing this uh, this power across this galaxy and you know oppressing these people or just genociding these other people, you know, giving the orders to Tarkin, even though he's taking those orders from Tarkin in the original one, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see him use the Force. I want to see him be a badass because all I've ever seen Anakin be, you know, without watching the Clone Wars, is 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 like a a petulant, angry kind of child. I didn't, I did not see him harden through war into becoming, you know, Darth Vader, like a fearsome uh, general who uh, could kill, you know, a whole battalion of people uh, all by himself. Like that's, I haven't seen that. I've only ever seen glimpses of him doing that kind of stuff and in like a weird crappy half comedy, half buddy cop, like (laughs) shit that he did in the prequels. Uh, And so flipping from that to being, uh, the galaxy's most evil dude and badass is is way you know just I haven't seen it yet and so this this movie was like a glimpse of that and that was man that it was awesome it was a great scene it was like yeah it was a little it was a little bit like watching Wolverine finally use his claws in like the second uh, X Men movie like the first one he doesn't cut anybody up or he doesn't cut anybody up who can't take it kind of thing. This is officially the first time the second X-Men movie has ever been referenced on a YouTube video. Yeah. I, well, actually may, maybe, but like <laughs> when, when like the, uh, the mansion's getting attacked. Yeah. He, he, no, I know. he stabs people to death and I'm like, yes. Okay. More of this, like good. And then it took them till until like Logan, to do that again, you know, like X Men Origins is just shit. But like, he doesn't even do it in that. Like, he doesn't really. Uh, he kind of does, but like, then like it's through a montage, and then he loses the taste for it. I'm like, that's fucking Wolverine's character. Like, he's a, he's a killer. Like, he's he's that kind of a guy. I mean, I guess he he cuts a ton of people up in uh, in the Wolverine as well. But so those last two movies. But it was kind of like it was finally the payoff. It was like this is why everybody likes him. He's got fucking knives in his hands. Uh, the reason why people think Darth Vader is fucking amazing is because he can choke people out to death whenever he wants. Uh, but there's more that y- you can extrapolate from those powers. Like he was he crushed that one guy's helmet upon him, upon himself, right? Which in retrospect is a little bit also kind of borrowed from. Uh, X Men First Class when Eric Lencher is getting tortured. Do you know that that scene I'm talking about? I don't remember off the top of my head. But, but like, it's when um, Kevin Bacon um, or Sebastian Shaw is uh, he kills uh, Magneto's mother, right? Because he can't move the uh, the coin, and then like he kills his mother, and then Magneto loses his shit, and he crushes the two soldiers' uh, metal helmets on their skulls, like crushes their heads in with the metal on their heads. So, like, Vader does that, I, th- I think, in this last scene. And I was like, you know, I was too in the moment to be like, oh, shit, they kind of ripped that off. But it was, you know, like, with, with the Force power, you could do shit like that. And it's, it's kind of always referenced, but it's never, it's never really seen on camera like it is in this movie. And so that was one thing I was like, that was fucking amazing. Like, I'd like to see, you know, more of that kind of stuff. But that's the other thing sure. about, like, with the Jedi. It's like, they don't... They don't use the force that way, right? So when we're always following a Jedi, we're never going to get like a badass uh, could kill anybody they want kind of scene like that. That's where you can explore more of that shit in a in kind of an anti-hero story. Like that's that's something I would kind of that's what I'm interested in. I kind of want to see a standalone Vader being a badass, you know, special ops guy. Um, you know, the 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 lead up from uh, the end of um, the first tri- the the prequels mm-hmm. in into where what he was in just one scene in this movie. I want to see a lot more of that. Like that would be really cool to me. You're gonna see that in Rebels, I think. Okay. Well, all right. All right. So I think we're at a good stopping point here. That's um, cool. And one one other thing I'd like to do is like as it comes up while we watch these uh, these kind of miniseries and and Clone Wars and stuff is. <laughs> I would like for you to give like the, um, you know, I don't think I don't think you're like a typical Star Wars nerd, but uh, that's to your advantage. I think that you can explain it in very accessible ways. When we come up against like this person's a Mandalorian or this person's a, um, 
You Somebody know. give like a five minute summary. Yeah, like take us through like the the layman's <laughs> description of what this what these people are like. How do they fit into the galaxy? So far as you can you can tell, because I'm sure okay. I'm gonna have those questions like right away. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll do that. I'll just kind of set up a, a bullet point for each episode. No, I think that'd be good. Uh-huh. I think that'd be interesting for folks to to see and kind of come along with because I, there's like tons of alien people who are just kind of I think in the original trilogy even and the prequels were just. They're there because it's like you're in space, so we're expecting to see aliens. But a lot of those have really interesting or kind of compelling lore, I think, around them. And that would be... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I want to stay... And I don't know that all of it. So I will do what I can, but I will try to make like... And I don't want to spend a half hour of the, of the conversation just going through the episode. So I right. want to be able to give like a five minute for each episode. Just kind of run down. I mean, as it comes up, because I already saw in like Clone Wars, uh, one of the people with Anakin is... It's like the weird, like they kind of have like tusks almost, like oh, thing. Head. You're talking about Ahsoka Katana? Yeah, maybe. She's awesome. Okay, sort well, of. you'll have to tell me what her race is or what that implies, I guess. Okay. Because, I mean, and, and she's Anakin's Padawan. Oh, what? He's not a master, though. He's still got a Padawan. You'll you'll understand. Okay. That's also what I what I want to name my next female dog is Ahsoka, <laughs> and I definitely refer to my two dogs as my Padawans. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. My wife won't let me name our daughter. I don't have one. I'm not announcing a pregnancy. Uh, if I did, my wife won't let me name our daughter Ahsoka. So. Okay. Well, uh, I kind of get that. I would, it, you know, I think you'd probably want to go more in the direction of, um, uh, family name or. Yeah. Not, she said I can name a dog or something, though. Not from Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but as long as it's not Katniss, um, I think I think, <laughs> I think think everyone will be happy with uh, with the name you choose. Ahsoka is fine. I actually work with a person who's named Ahsoka, but she's from Sri Lanka, and probably I don't think they watched the Clone Wars when they <laughs> when they named her. But Maybe not. Maybe, anyway. the, maybe Ahsoka in Star, in Star Wars is named after your co-worker. Um, all right, so let's wrap up. Uh, but stay on the line because I want to talk to you after you, yep. after well, you stop the recording. All right. Well, I will thank the folks who uh, who stayed with us for all that and listened. I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you did or didn't, uh, hit us up in the comments. And uh, if you liked the video, uh, go ahead and hit the like button and uh, subscribe. It's free of charge. So uh, I don't know what you're waiting for. Um, that's that. Uh, for myself and for Rocco, we will see you all next time. Later on.